developing countries have problems. One of them is how to provide decent education to its students. The number of Indian students in Ukraine, for example, is a case in point. As a matter of fact, there seem to be about uh, 80,000 students, foreign students studying in Ukraine and India sends the largest number amongst them, possibly about 20,000. What I would like to discuss about is engineering, although the same principles may be applicable in other areas as well. Mr. Narayanamurthy, the founder of Infosys, made a famous statement that his son did not get admission in Indian Institute of Technology or IIT, so they took admission in Cornell. IITs are notorious for the selection rate, they select only 1 percent. There is nothing for losers. Of course, some of them will get some alternative, but most people do not have anything good. Such a situation may be there in other countries also, because IITs are considered as role models. We can depict the situation with this pyramid. It has only the bottom layer and the top layer. In the bottom layer, you see all students who want to go to elite institutions. Unfortunately, the elite institutions admit only 1 percent. So, I say that it has vertex with 1 percent successful students. The bottom has all 100 percent aspirants. It has no intermediate layers at all. For most students, it is an unattainable pyramid. So, instead of focusing on the top numbers, what if we can ask for averages? For example, can we say that 25 percent computer science and engineering graduates should be able to program? At present, the number is less than 5 percent in India, for example. Can we ask for 25 percent electrical engineers to be able to apply Kirchhoff's laws? At the school level, can we demand that 25 percent school students, school graduates to be able to solve problems that involve table 12? If that can be achieved, that top 1 percent will automatically happen. In that process, all intermediate layers also will happen. Unfortunately, it is a difficult task. For example, India has not solved this problem in 70 years after the independence. We will return to this topic after a detour. I will explain this with an ambitious project that we have been working on. Can we improve the employment potential through IT training? We created 10 minute long audio video tutorials. We call them spoken tutorials created for self learning. We dub them in all 22 languages. These can be used offline. We trained 70 lakh or 7 million students using spoken tutorials. Many students benefited by our training. After that, we constructed a pyramid of excellence. So, how did we do that? We trained a large number of students on Scilab. What is Scilab? It is an amazing open source software. We asked the students who learnt Scilab to do something more. In fact, the students wanted us, students asked us. So, I told them take any standard textbook in science and engineering, code the solved problems from that book using Scilab, run the program and check the answers. We should get the same answer as in the book. So, it is a easy task, more than 1000 students coded. We gave them certificates, URL of their code and so on so forth. It helped the students to get jobs, admission in uh, good universities for higher studies. The 100,000 examples that we created are useful to the whole world. These coders form the second layer of the pyramid. It has two layers now. 
the bottom layer all learners of Scilab, the next layer coders of examples in Scilab. Together they produced 100,000 examples. It is also possible to construct different layers of the pyramid through exams. We compared two approaches for the appointment of short term fellows and interns. The first approach was based on exams. The second was through a two week assignment. In the second approach, lower rank students also got selected. In fact, they even ended up doing better than other students in the fellowship. So, in fact, I would say that high exam marks are not a measure of motivation nor performance. Scilab work that I mentioned was motivation based. Anyone could have tried. Similarly, we constructed higher layers of the pyramid. Here is one such pyramid. We start from the bottom. All learners of Scilab are there. Some of them are coders. Then there were people who got selected as uh, fellows. Some of them developed code. At the next level, they developed toolboxes. Some of them did research projects. Final layer could be major projects or entrepreneurship. In a similar way, we constructed pyramids on different topics. As one moves up the pyramid, tasks become more difficult, but any motivated person can work hard and go up. Students at the top can be placed anywhere. In fact, even those at the second level could be placed. We just saw that in Scilab case, there are no limits on numbers at any level. So, we call them attainable pyramids of excellence. When the students see people at high levels benefiting, they think if only I had put in 10 percent more effort, I too could have gone up and I also could have benefited. So, everybody works hard, the entire pyramid gets lifted. A developing country like India needs tens of thousands of such pyramids. Let us go back to the elite institutions in developing countries that we mentioned at the beginning. In fact, recall the unattainable pyramids of excellence. Only one person get in, nothing for others. Can we create intermediate layers? Of course, people could say, let us look at the problem differently. Why worry only about engineering and medicine? People in other fields are also successful and happy. In fact, some of them are actually doing better. Unfortunately, people do not like the go to other fields idea. They tell me, you benefited by the IIT system. Why do you want to prevent me from going to IITs? The next thought process is go to other countries if you do not get selected in elite institutions. In fact, this is already happening. For example, 40 percent of the students who do not get selected into IITs apparently go overseas. The problem with this is what about the balance 60 percent? In any case, both the approaches are running away from the real issue. Unfortunately, admission into elite institutions is a pretty bad problem. Students take an average of 5 years to prepare for the entrance exams. They also spend lots of money. In this figure, you can see the amount spent by countries on higher education as a percentage of annual income. India is the least prosperous on per capita basis. Its citizens spend the most on higher education. They spend six times their annual income. One reason is possibly the exorbitant cost of preparation for the entrance exams. Of course, studying overseas could also be another reason. Another problem with this entrance exams is that the preparation is only to get selected. There is no alignment between what they study for entrance exams and what happens after they get admission. 
In other words, the prepared material may be useless after admission. Typically, a student solves a good, successful student solves more than 1000 trigonometric problems. For example, they are of no use in IIT. They are of no use if one does not get selected. For example, it is not a life skill. In contrast, let us take a western university like MIT or Stanford. A student may get points for being good in Bharatanatyam, a classical dance form from India. If not selected also, it is useful because it is a life skill. In contrast, solving thousands of convoluted problems is useless. Trigonometry is one example, there could be many others. Unfortunately, case by case admission may be impossible in the developing countries. There may be too many students. For example, in India, 1 million students compete for 10,000 seats. If we do a thought experiment, we can ask, is it possible to align the entrance exam with the academic program that one gets selected for? For example, suppose one wants to be a chemical engineer. Can one study chemical engineering for two years in a college? The entrance exam to elite institutions should also be chemical engineering based. If successful, they can join the elite institution, study for two more years and get an undergraduate degree. If not, that is if they do not get selected, studies are not wasted, one can be a good chemical engineer and good chemical engineers are in short supply anyway. During the first two years of preparation, one can find out if one likes the subject. If instead, they would rather be a wildlife photographer, for example, they can skip exams, they do not have to worry about the elite institutions. We can provide a level playing field for all who prepare for entrance exams. Nowadays, very good video courses are available. For example, the Indian government also has made outstanding video courses called NPTEL. There might be several others as well and all of these are available free of cost. One can dub them into local languages, for example, and elite institutions can clear doubts free of cost. One can use latest educational technology for these purposes. For example, we conducted at IIT Bombay a program called Ask a Question for 10 years, one day a week. Students from anywhere could ask questions. Our faculty members would connect live and answer the questions. We did this for 10 years well before the pandemic started. Such techniques can be used and we can provide a level playing field for all students. Colleges where students prepare for exams also benefit. These colleges may lose let us say 1 to 10 percent to elite institutions, but the same high quality education will be available to all other students. Good colleges may lose more students, but better brand. For example, if they lose more students, they lose the tuition money, but then their brand may get strengthened. And because of that, other students in the college may get better jobs. So, let me now explain how the intermediate layers of the pyramid can be formed. It is based on the number of students sent to elite institution. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have students who aspire for the elite institutions. At the next level, you see colleges that send 0.1 percent of their student population to elite institutions, then 1 percent, then 10 percent. Of course, it is possible to think of different numbers as well and at the top layer you have elite institutions. One has to remember 
that there are many colleges at every level. So, it should be easy to get admission in them based on school performance for example. As a result, the school bag can become lighter. We can return the childhood to the children. Remember that help from elite institutions is available to all colleges. As a result, students from bottom layer can also get admission because excellence is not a prerogative of a limited few. I explained one attainable pyramid of excellence for admission to elite institutions, but there could be other methods as well. Anything is welcome, we need to solve the problem. The problem is that of the unattainable pyramid, that problem has to be tackled. We have to address it soon, because a lot of students, especially young ones are suffering. Some may even call it the denial of natural justice. So, let us get together and solve this problem. Thank you for listening.